one of the good things that the SAT shows you is how to look at double passages and really concentrate going back and forth, understanding the key differences. And then, you know, that's the step before articulating the key differences. So when you go into essay two, those passages aren't lined out for you. And you have to find them. And let me give you an example of how that works here. Sorry, a little bit of scrolling trouble here. But if you look at McKay on 163, he really articulates, perhaps in a somewhat obscure language, how Schultz got it wrong, and I think he's correct here, and I'll follow through with this. McKay argues that scientific ideas in 1982 and 1983 about the condition and the transmissibility of a causative agent were later portrayed by Schultz and others to be more self-evident than in fact they were at the time. In other words, Schultz in Gaetan Dugas gives him a certainty that a virus is causing AIDS in 1982, when in fact most people didn't know that, and there's no reason that Gaetan would. So if you kind of crawl over, and I'm going to, again, I've got a little bit of a scrolling problem, but I'll, I'll get the right article here. Okay, so here's Gaetan Dugas. Well, let, let me go one before that. All right. Here's Schiltz writing in 1982, um, about May. So we'll see Gaten Dugas in November. Scientists have had as much trouble isolating the cause of the outbreak as finding a cure. Research attribute, this was called gay-related immune disorder before it was called AIDS. Research attribute, I'll call it AIDS diseases, to a breakdown in the immune system. Ding, that they knew. But then what causes the short circuit of the immune system? The federal officials ran profiles of 130 risk factors, and they found that se uh, lots of sexual activity, um, strange sexual practices, drugs, um, sexually transmitted diseases. And look at this, it's unclear whether sexual practice, drugs, diseases, or treatments for diseases or a combination of all these factors are behind the epidemic. And some people say that to suggest a viral agent may be involved, the problem is, according to Howard Jaffe at the CDC, the problem is, is that people who live together also tend to do a lot of other things that are similar. So it's not just a virus, it's other things. And so, there's a lot of uncertainty, but look what he does with Gaten Dugas just a few months later. Um, this is on page 196, let me check, 196 and 98. So this is November of 82, and here's Gaten Dugas. Schultz is, of course, breaking a journalistic law by giving a character he's never met internal thoughts. There's no way he'd know this, but look at how he characterizes Gaten Dugas' thinking practice. Who had done this to him? Certainly somebody had. They had passed him a virus that meant he was going to die, and he couldn't get over wondering who it was. So Gaten Dugas is certain that he's been, somebody infected him with a virus, and then the scene ends with um, Gaten pushing the bathhouse door shut basically going to infect another person. So you notice Gaten has knowledge that it's a virus. That's his thought process as Schultz creates them. Schultz, months earlier, had no idea and was quite uncertain. And why McKay gets it is that, guess what? The scientific ideas in 1982 and 83 about the causation and transmissibility of a causative agent, meaning about a virus, were portrayed by Schultz to be more self-evident than they were at the time. That is, he's giving Dugas an awareness that there's a virus when 
virtually nobody else in the public and scientific community was broadcasting that point. And so, again, he gives Dugas a very dark wisdom that he's spreading a virus, which really wasn't a part of the general public and scientific discussion in 1982. Certainly not the main part. And I hope that helps you understand how Schiltz manipulated the character Dugas to give him certainty about a virus at a time when there were several guesses.